Yeah, I mean, well, dude, we covered PAX Day before, but that was like way back in its first announcement. But this is like about actual gameplay. And uh, that's why I'm interested in this, because, um, you know, we, uh, we should, I mean, it, dude, I, I'm always looking for a good MMO, you know? I always want games to succeed. So it is important to figure out what is good, what is bad, and so on. So we haven't watched a Force Gaming video in a while. Force Gaming is a great guy. I will be linking his video, of course, in the description below. Uh, so give it a like, give it a sub, uh, their video. And um, let's see what PAX Day uh, is to Force Gaming. He says it's an early access disappointment, which is very sad. So let's see what it goes. Let's see how it goes. You know, I'll start off by saying this. If you just want to build some cool looking medieval structures, like yeah. a hut, a home, or- I heard the building in PAX Day is the best part of PAX Day even an entire village, PAX Day's got you covered. As outlined by recent videos showcasing various community builds, you can make some cool looking stuff. Like Dude, genuinely, these- look at, look at the buildings, man. The buildings look dope in this game. And this is like all player created buildings. Like I know um, uh, Asmongold created, uh, I think in the second play test, he literally made, or well, not he, but his community, uh, because he had like a thousand people playing in his community. Uh, they made Minas Tirith from Lord of the Rings. Just straight up, the entire thing. These are fantastic-looking medieval buildings. I will not I deny that. Of it. Although, do keep in mind that building anything beyond a tiny wood dwelling does require grinding. cooperation with a large number Lots of people. Lots of grinding. People farming yeah. the vast amounts of resources needed and people proficient in the various processing skills required. I think the graphics also look pretty good in this. Hired to refine those resources into the building component. Yeah, or dirt hot. Yeah, dude, I'm not good at building in any game like this. Dude, I am so bad at building. Completely before correct. Before you can make the buildings. You can build a tiny little home yourself, but you won't be building a massive village or castles like these by yourself. Right. That requires a lot of people all working together. As the developer outlined in their pre-release mission statement, PAX Day is not a single player game. It's yeah. also, according to that same post, not a theme park MMO, not a medieval simulator, <laughs> not a survival game, and not a fast paced game. After spending most of yesterday playing PAX I heard that the combat is terrible. So I'm, I'm hoping that he talks about the combat because gameplay and combat, you know, the actual MMO mechanics, the RPG mechanics, those things, that's what really makes the biggest difference for me in an MMO. Day, in addition to time spent in so earlier see. alpha test, I will add one more thing to the list, something else that PAX Day isn't, and that's ready. It's just <laughs> Jesus. And I want you guys to know, He's, we've covered a lot of force gaming on this channel. I've watched a lot of force gaming videos. He's generally an extremely positive person. For, so for him to say a game is not ready, that's like the closest he'll ever say to a game being bad. Um, that's a really, like, this is, he never says this. Like, he, he very rarely says anything negative about a game. So that means this game is dog water not quite ready and in its current state i don't think it's particularly very good either uh, it does do a few things well players can come together and build very bro he's so much nicer than i am i would be cooking this it, because i saw some of the gameplay of this game and it looked rough i'll give you my thoughts afterwards as well cool stuff as you've seen and visually pax day looks but I didn't phenomenal get to play myself. i mean like jaw dropping at times how good looking yeah. this game, game looks can be. in particular the lighting and the good old unreal 5 also the other thing really good about um how they utilize unreal 5 is that um so they had the they have like a uh, in the beta they had some like little camera mode where you could basically like you know your character would stand still and could die uh it wasn't like it was invulnerable or anything but you could basically go into camera mode and make the camera just fly around the entire map and the level of detail all over the map that you could you, you could go really far with that camera as in like screens and screens and screens and screens away like you could go as far as you could run in the game in 10 minutes, if not longer. It was crazy. 
environmental effects on many occasions i would be like walking through the woods in a field or looking out at some vista and yeah. think to myself man this looks amazing but everything else about the game is simply not very good at the moment Ooh. and that at the moment part is important because yes this is an early access title they didn't release pax day saying it was a finished product very much the opposite but as right. with anything else the quality and completeness of early access games can hold on i gotta pause um combat is like that yeah but it's a worse dark shade i'll tell you i'll if he doesn't go into the combat i'm sure he will but if he doesn't i'll give you my thoughts on what i saw in the combat because the combat for pax day looked like absolute dog water and i'll give many reasons why i'll give many many reasons why I, I love the animal models in this game as well, man. Like the graphics in this game are crazy good. Product very much the opposite. But as with yeah. anything else, the quality and completeness of <clears throat> early access games can vary. For example, two of my favorite games so far this year have been early access. Right. Both Enshrouded and No Rest for the Wicked. And and uh, one one big difference with Enshrouded, Enshrouded's crafting system is like, you know, pretty up and everything as well. But the combat in Shrouded is really good. It's almost like, you know, Souls-like feel. And also, it has actual RPG mechanics. You level up, you have quests. Um, there's an entire, like, perk web system. There's all kinds of craziness. Oh, I got you. No worries, Phil. I, I keep it very interactive, my friend. Anytime you'd, like, type or anything, I try to respond and all kinds of stuff. Even though those games aren't complete with more content and features still planned to come, both right. of them still also felt fully realized. I still need to play No Rest for the Wicked. I just realized I still have not played this game. I heard so many good things about this game. Absolutely. And thank you for joining the giveaway, Sash. Make sure you hop in the Discord as well. Hell yeah. It's an amazing community. You'll fit right in generally polished and most importantly they were fun to play yes i sunk over 50 hours into the early access launches of dude and shrouded's combat was crazy fun like that little glider mode oh my god man you were like flying through the map it was so cool and that was something that pal world got really 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 right as well it made the building really easy really simple but the actual mechanics of exploring of flying of combat of dodging all of those things were so smooth and so fun. That's what made Pal World so, so popular for, uh, you know, it was, a, it was a pretty good amount of time until people like, you know, grinded out the entire set of content it had. But that's money well spent both of these games but pax yeah. day lacks any of that currently Ooh. it doesn't Ooh. feel fully realized it doesn't seem even close to polish and it hasn't been very fun to play unfortunately oh, enough now fun is subjective um i have got no doubt that people are having a good time working oh together God. with 5 10 20 plus other He's people and building tonight. some awesome looking medieval villages as of this recording there are some 8 to ten thousand <clears throat> concurrent players online and i'm sure many of them are enjoying themselves but wait is it fully early access let me check this right now because if it's like if it's like you don't even need a beta key anymore, I will play Pax Day and I will give you my own answers. It's forty dollars just to get in the early access. Yeah, I'm not gonna buy this game for forty dollars to check it out for you guys. Yeah. Uh, what I will do is try to reach out to them and see if I can get a creator code and uh, then I'll maybe be able to give you guys information. But if the game is like not even fun to play, according to Forest Gaming, I'm not going to spend $40 on it. You can generally and I can tell you this as someone who's watched a lot of Forest Gaming's content and he's been he's been creating content for like 10, 12, 15 years, maybe on YouTube, if not longer. Um, you can trust what Forest Gaming says. For me, the game still needs quite a bit of work before I'll consider playing okay. it again. And I know I'm not alone. Uh, as of now, Steam Ooh. reviews sit at a mix with 46%. So this number has changed. Let's see what the current number is. 65. So it has gone up. It has gotten better. 
We'll look at the reviews after we finish this video, by the way. A rating of 46%. <clears throat> now, I am sure some of those negative reviews were due to the launch day server and performance issues. Yeah, there was I heard the servers were poor. There was the fact that you couldn't build anything from most of yesterday. Like, right. placing down stuff would consume the resources, but then the wall station or whatever it was you tried to place wouldn't appear. Or right. sometimes you would place down a structure and later that structure would vanish. But the technical stuff aside, much of which has already been addressed, there are more important things that they need to take care of now this is the combat by the way guys this this you know essentially left click spam this is all the combat is that's why this game is bad so he is at least showing some which is i really really do appreciate a force gaming this is why this combat is completely in utter dog water I would classify this game as yeah. extremely early access. Like we need to put early access yeah. games into different tiers. I think they're estimated. Basically what people think, and this is what like other content creators think and stuff. I don't know if he's going to say this, but others have. Uh, basically what they think is that they t went to the Unreal Store and just grabbed like the most basic combat mechanics from the Unreal Store, paid for it, you know, via the Unreal Store, which is fine. That's fine to start with. And they just slapped that into their game. And they're going to like update the combat later and make it like actual combat. But that just shows how, you know, not worth playing the game is right now. That's the problem. Like if they improve it and make it better later on, that's great. But right now, this is what the combat is one year early access period until 1.0 release seems right. a little ambitious like pax day feels very far from finish it's not something that i would currently recommend spending full price on let alone right. the monthly subscription that the game intends to launch with uh so what does need work well pretty much everything else outside also um they will be having uh some pretty egregious monetization uh, obviously you saw the $40 price tag to even be able to play the game. Uh, it, they're planning on having a subscription fee when the game launches. Also, also, um, they are going to have an in-game store where you can buy all kinds of stuff from potions to materials to so on and so forth. So there will be at least some level of pay to win at least right now. So maybe that'll change or maybe that has changed since I last heard about it. But they were at the last dev um, uh, information that they had, which was, I think, like about a month ago, but still it's only a month old, uh, that information, that they were planning on having an in-game store with these types of things as well. Absolutely. Uh, Chumba says, this is a terrible idea, in my opinion. If you release a game with incomplete combat and people learn to hate the combat, there's going to be less people wanting to play it when you finally fix your shit. Completely agree with you, Chumbus. Completely, 100% agreed. Also, welcome. It's good to see you. I completely agree. I think I think for me in an MMO, one of the most important things is the gameplay, is the combat, is the like RPG mechanics, is the progression. These are the most important things to me. Even in the survival game. Like even in a survival game, like dude, when a survival game is good building and like the actual mechanics of the game are lackluster, I called out Nightingale for that reason as well. The building mechanics in Nightingale were great. The RPG mechanics in Nightingale and the combat in Nightingale were quite rough and very, very early access and quite a big issue. And I called it out for that reason. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah, completely agreed of the visuals and the building. Consider this the <clears throat> constructive uh, feedback portion of right. the video. For me, the biggest standout disappointment absolutely is the combat. Yeah. Uh, it's awful. I don't know how it's else awful. to put it. I don't really want to sugarcoat it. Just does not feel good. Some of the worst MMO combat I've ever right. experienced. Zero weight or impact feel to any part of the combat loop. Were yep. it not for the health bars floating over You wouldn't even heads, know that you're hitting someone. I couldn't any, ever yeah. tell you if I hit anything. Like yeah. I, I have no clue because it constantly feels like you're swinging at the air even when attacks do connect i've heard some people say that the game is using the baked in ue5 oh, tech demo he said it look at that look at that force gaming is so complete man he's so good combat i don't know if that's the case they might be exaggerating but i would say whatever implementation of combat feedback it's that they've got right now it needs a lot of yeah. work. It just is very floaty. It feels weightless and it's not in. I do agree with him from like the, you know, the the look of the world is fine. It's really nice. You know, the building mechanics are great. 
I feel like they focused enough on those things. I think they really need to focus on everything else. And I think like everything else, and by that I mean the RPG mechanics, the leveling, <clears throat> the combat, obviously. There's like no quests whatsoever. Um, the dungeons are dog water. Uh, all of these major, major issues. The the uh, enemies are not that interesting either. I mean, it's like the first time you run into a bear, I'm, it seemed like people were freaked out because the bear is really strong. But they just like, you know, run away from the bear and it's that's it. The bear doesn't really chase or anything. Um, basically, every single aspect of this game needs massive work. I don't see any world where this game is fixed in a year. I don't like unless the team is huge and they're able to like destroy all of their like, you know, uh, thresholds and, and uh, milestones and everything really, really fast. I don't see any way this game is going to be ready in one year. That's crazy. At all. For me, improving the combat should be their number one priority. Completely I think agree. That, that alone would make playing the game far more enjoyable. If fighting things was engaging, right. I would spend more time playing Pax Day, just going around clearing camps and hunting wildlife. Good feeling combat carries a lot of value to me, but simply right now, combat. Oh my God. Look at this. This is. This is a mess, bro. This is a mess. And in Pax Day, it's not good at all. It's like bottom of the barrel. Uh, unfortunately, the weightlessness and lack of good feel extends to another big portion of the game. As mentioned earlier, building stuff is right. pretty much the main thing there is to do right now in Pax Day, and yeah. half of that equation is gathering the materials needed for building. Similar right. to combat, gathering also feels pretty bad, mainly because it feels like nothing at all between the sounds, animations, and UI feedback or lack thereof. Which is weird because like, you know, for all of its fault, New World had many faults. There was many issues with New World. The the crafting in New World and the farming of materials in New World, like the hitting of the mining nodes and the cutting of trees, it actually felt and sounded so good. Like that 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 sound when you hit the rock in New World. Shit, man. That by itself kept me playing for like a week straight. That was, it was so weird how much of a big difference that made for me. Oh my lord. And this does the opposite. Of collecting resources isn't engaging either. Chopping down a tree, picking up herbs, mining rocks and ore, it all lacks satisfying yeah, feel. Worse than feedback. Minecraft. As yeah, with the combat, it's Minecraft. as if you're swinging and missing even when you hit. Even when you hit a tree to chop it down, it doesn't feel like it happened. There, yeah. The feedback isn't there. Some things have no ma animations at all, like harvesting animal parts, for example, while many of those that do have animations still lack that satisfying feel. And right. while this feedback might sound silly to some, uh, there are plenty of games no, that real. have done good feeling, gathering and harvesting many survival games and mmos have nailed look at that he even brought up new world man this is why force gaming is smart guys he agrees with me all the time this in the past i would look at them for inspiration you know. off the top of my head i would say that the gathering and crafting in both lost ark and new world were extremely well done i disagree with lost ark uh i played lost ark uh i did not play it much because it quickly showed how pay to win it was and i you know, have a particular dislike and uh, vehemence and and uh, you'll just call it what it is. I hate pay to win games. Um, but uh, I did, you know, check out the crafting in, in uh, Lost Ark and everything. Lost Ark's crafting was complete and utter garbage. I do not agree with him with Lost Ark. It's the rare disagreement I have with uh, with him. Um, don't disrespect Minecraft. What do you mean? We said no, I said the crafting and the gathering in this game is worse than Minecraft beard. I said it's worse than Minecraft. And those are games that are full of other issues, but chopping down trees and harvesting ore felt good and impactful yep. in both. Exactly. That part of the gameplay experience was satisfying. Gathering in Pax Day, just like it's combat, it is. It, it does walk. not feel it's good. Another big thing I want to point out right now that I do think will push a lot of players away is the grind of the game. Yeah. Progressing past the very basic early tiers of items requires tons and tons of grinding. Now, much of yeah. this is clearly fueled by the developer's desire to require working together as a group. And one way to reinforce that requirement is that making progressing practically impossible for solo players, they have achieved this goal in two main ways. Okay. Number one, the sheer quantity of items required for progression. And number two, the proficiency skill levels that no single person could achieve themselves in a This is this feels like the crafting uh and like the, the I guess like the ideas of crafting from Nightingale. Nightingale did very so well, it did, didn't make you over specialize, not that part, 
but the amount of materials needed in Nightingale were crazy. Oh my god. And it just got more and more and more complicated. And so you needed like small nuts and bolts and this and that and twine and string, which are not the same thing. And then tape and then this and adhesive and like all of these things just to make a table. And <laughs> like what? And I don't mind that if, if the boxes were attached to your building. Like, as in, like, you can put it in your box, you can have it in there, and you can use it at any time. However, and, and we got spoiled with this because PAL World works like that. Um, and Shrouded's building works like that. But, but Nightingale's uh, crafting does not work like that. Exactly. Yeah, it's easier to make a table in real life at that point. Jesus Christ. Yeah, basically correct, Chill Sash. And also, welcome to the Discord, my friend. I did give you permissions. Thank you so much. Reasonable amount of time. You are required various parts <clears throat> from various professions, and leveling up those professions takes a heck of a lot of time, such that you cannot continue until you get with someone else who has progressed in right. another profession. And so both of these things will prevent solo, and I would say even small groups of players, from what we can tell, from progressing very far yeah. in the game. But it, it seems like they're literally catering towards giant, giant communities of like 100 plus people at the same time, which is certainly a choice certainly a choice even if you are playing in a big group if you've got like 30 plus people that you're playing packs day with you still have a lot of work ahead of you uh, the game has a massive number of items that you'll need to collect there are at least hundreds if not potentially thousands of different resource and item types yep. there's a lot to manage even for people who are used to playing various survival games which packs day is not by the way that was in the list of things packs day yeah is it states it's not a survival game but it has a lot of survival mechanics, so I, I don't get it. No, it's Pax Day does have the typical resource types. You'll find various sorts of ores. Jesus. These are all different items, by the way, guys. Short wooden beam. Short wooden beam, 63 degrees. Short wooden beam, 45 degrees. Short wooden beam, 34 degrees. Shaped straight log. Wooden beam. Not short wooden beam, wooden beam, 63 degrees, 45, 34, short wooden stairs, short balcony railing, short wooden pillar, wooden stairs, railing, pillar, railing post. And that's just some of the wood ones. That's some of them. Stones and clays, plants, herbs, fruits, woods, fibers, thatches, animal parts, yep. over a hundred different alchemy items. The list goes on and on. And many... And if they're interesting, I don't mind this. In fact, I like it when crafting is very intricate and has a lot of stuff. But if it's grindy for the sake of being grindy, as opposed to, you know, having some real mechanics behind it and um, just being interesting. I don't know. That sounds like a sounds like such a cop out. But really, like it, it is what it is. I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what it is. If not most of those also have several tiers. So for example, there are three tiers of iron ore that we found in the last test, and that goes for other resources. You played Starbase and had a program an entire starship to function. Is Starbase a simulator? Because if it's a simulator, that is what you're getting. That's what you want to get. If if I'm playing Dwarf Fortress, I expect to play Dwarf Fortress. If I'm playing Pax Day the MMO, I'm not trying to play Dwarf Fortress. You know, that's the thing. That is the thing. You don't see the problem. I build a house plank by plank uh, IRL when I can build it out of pixels. That's true, Rack. Yeah, exactly. It's shipbuilding simulator. Yeah, there you go. So that's what it is. But this game is not that. Versus as well. So there are many different. Or if they're trying to make it that dark shade, then they should all in on it and say this is what it is and not make it an MMO. They should make it into Minecraft in that case. Because if this is what the game is going to be as an MMO, this MMO is not going to survive very long at all. Especially with dog water combat and dog water, you know, game mechanics and questing and everything else. Because, like, then it's really just not an MMO. <laughs> That's what Resources I mean. Resources and item types. Further, Starbase is also an MMO. Okay, I don't know what Starbase is.
Let's see what this is. Oh, look. It's mixed as well. I mean, that that kind of proves my point, Dark Shade. That's my entire point. These are these are major issues. And if we want this to be a, you know, they, they stated that they want this game to be like a giant MMO. And it won't be if it has these issues. That's all. We're just giving our feedback. Multiplied. We're not hating on the devs. I'm not saying the devs are dog water or they deserve ire or anything like that. I'm just saying that it's going to take more than a year to work out all these problems. And the problems are very egregious. That's all into their different tiers that you'll be using for crafting your items, weapons, tools, and especially for building, which you will then also need huge right. quantities of certain items if you want to build anything other than a basic hut. Which leads me to another big issue right now for PAX Day, okay. that is the crafting and storage. So for starters, there is no craft from storage. This is a clear feature inclusion that would- We need, yeah, this is what I was talking about, the boxes being linked to your actual crafting and your actual base. I feel like every single survival game needs this now we've been spoiled with the couple of games that have this and now it's like a glaring issue when any game does not have this that's one reason i stopped playing v rising v rising's combat and gameplay are excellent i played the absolute hell out of it uh, i played uh three streams of it on stream uh just when it first came out um no no just now sorry and i played like eight streams of it way back when it way first came out in early access all the way way back one two years ago and um i i loved uh you know the, that game a lot however the fact that it does not have link crafting boxes is such a glaring issue and there's no need for it there's no need for it it's just needless hassle and it's such a major nitpick that i think that every survival game needs to look into in the future immediately improve the game especially when you understand just how many chests you're likely going to need yeah. if you're playing so for example in the last test uh, just a few weeks ago liam spent his time just trying to be a cook like that is all he focused 40 hours afk leveling cooking in one week dude who has time for a game like this man this is not combat this is not even building this is just leveling cooking don for majority of the first yeah, few it's a full-time job yeah exactly and you're paying to do the full-time job days and after about four days of playing with just him working oh on cooking God, and doing some gathering in between the processing portion of it they had over 50 storage chests just for cooking related items five zero <laughs> oh my God. 50 boxes of items in order to level just cooking. There we go. Yeah, if I'm gaming, I do need to chill on wine, not work. Exactly, Parallax. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Holy smokes, man. 50. And you can imagine how much of a nightmare it is to manually sort through. Yeah, some of these items are max stacking at five. Some of them are like 50, I, I guess it's like for like the smaller items or like the, the more numerous items. But I mean, still like, dude, this is crazy. This is crazy to look at. Yeah, good catch. I didn't even catch that water. A lot of these items have a stack of five. Through 50 storage chests looking for items to do your <clears> cooking <throat> and that was just for cooking. The game also has professions for alchemy, yep. jewelry making, carpentry, armor and blacksmithing, leather. And I like that it has a lot of crafting, but the crafting has to be usable, you know? Like you have to be able to, you know, you have to be able to do the crafting in order to enjoy the crafting. Working, fletching, weaponsmithing, and tailoring, and each of those professions have their own sets of materials, resources, and components that yeah. you will need storing, manual sorting, and retrieval of. Welcome After just Alashi. four days in the last test, Liam's group had over a hundred. Bad storage management is a user issue? Untrue. Completely untrue. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. You look at a game like Pound World or Enshrouded, where all the boxes are linked, and there's no issue with storage. None. Compare that to this massive issue with storage. 
if you link the boxes, you would solve half the issues already. If you make the stack sizes from 5 to 50, and from 50 to 100, 150, 500, or whatever for these large items, if you need that many items, you increase the stack size, or you lower the grind, one of the two. You can't have both of these things happening at the same time. There's just no way. There's no way. So that's not a user issue. That is a that is an issue of the game. That is absolutely an issue of the game. Yeah, unorganized storage can be a user issue, but bad storage, that's a game issue. You you said it better than I did, Chumpus. You were picking up exactly what I was putting down there. Absolutely, absolutely. 150 storage chest. This was a group of 10 to 15 players uh, online at any given time. And apparently you're going to need to play in groups much larger than that, right. which would presumably mean you need many more than 150 storage chest. It's a lot to manage, especially without crafting from storage. Right. I think it would go a long way if they added craft. The, the sheer amount of numbers. Did you guys hear that sheer amount of numbers you need for even five to 10 people? And you're expected to have groups of like 100, 100 plus. This is crazy. Crafting from storage. And honestly, this is like untenable for a game of this size. Similar note, those crafting proficiency levels will have a will be a big gate for solo and smaller. <laughs> yeah, I mean, actually, Mage, you're not wrong. At that point, why not just build your home out of storage chests? Yeah. Yeah, the walls are storage chests at that point groups of players as you level your That's proficiency so good. you do this by engaging in the crafting activity so working at the bench whether you are doing alchemy jewelry making carpentry actually doing those things levels you up makes you better makes it easier and you less likely to fail crafting of the harder recipes right. of that of that type but and also like your craftings can fail and you lose all of your items that you were trying to craft with by the way that's that's what he's describing the the crafting also has failure failure points in it and um, it, so, like, if you use, so at some point, I, I remember watching someone play, they grinded out a set of materials for three hours, tried to craft a sword, a really good sword. The crafting failed. They lost three hours of gameplay. Because it took three hours worth of grinding materials in order to make one sword. There's no way, man. This is this is crazy. This is literally crazy. As you move into the later tiers, the higher end forms. Oh yeah, also the guy that I saw playing that, they turned off the game, they ended stream, and they said, I'll be back later. It was a quit point. It was It was an actual quit point right in front of us. I was like, wow. Just, just wow. <laughs> That's crazy. Oh my god. Uh, Chill Sash says, maybe they wanted to build a community where players interact as real-life merchants and professionals, like someone builds a house, they hire an in-game contractor, uh, laugh out loud, and then all kinds of make sense, but who generally wants to do a workable double shift just to level up in-game? Yeah, exactly, yeah. And like, if they're trying to hyper-specialize, it's okay, but you, you there's a level. And like, for example... You have, spe you have specializations in World of Warcraft. You can only have two crafting uh, thingies in World of Warcraft. You can be a leather worker, a gatherer, or whatever. You can still do, like, the basic stuff. Like, every person can do cooking and um, uh, bandage. Well, bandage is no longer a thing in retail. Uh, but in original, in first aid, uh, you could do um, fishing. And uh, I think there was a couple other things. But, like, that was it. And you could do all those three things, but you had to specialize in, you know, like even in vanilla, you had to, you could specialize in mace crafting, uh, blade crafting, armor crafting, this and that. And like, they took a lot of those out as the games went on. It, it, and so like, they took out a lot of specializations because it was needless grind and it would like, you know, over specialize people. Yeah. Yeah, archaeology. Archaeology was one, the one I forgot. Thank you, Parallax. Exactly, exactly. There's a game called Echo that does this much better. Uh, send that to me, Watcher. I'll, I'll check it out. I'll check it out. Of progression for these different professions. Bandages, They're going to require... Bandages are part of tailoring now? Oh. 
They changed that. For you to get high-end materials crafted by players with proficiencies in the other professions. So for right. example, if you are a cook, eventually you're going to need to make a higher-end oven, but you won't be able to do that on your own because you're going to need a smith to craft the higher tier version of ore, and you're going to need a tailor to make another component Jesus. that goes as part of that. If either player in the group of people that you're playing with is behind in their progression, you are going to get straight up bottlenecked until they love. Yeah, bottlenecking in a large group also feels really bad and he didn't have a small group yeah he said he had a group of like 20 people that should be more than enough to not have bottlenecks that's crazy level up which is exactly what happened to us in the last test this is going to affect Jesus, obviously the man. solo players but even again those small groups of players i think 5 10 to 15 people unless you are all actively playing at the same pace and at the same level you're going to get bottlenecked by other players who aren't up to the levels they need to be so you have to have a set of 100 people that are all no lifing the game at the same time to make the thing that you need in order for you to progress. So yes, there is a lot to grind. And again, this is clearly done to reinforce the requirement of- Yeah, exactly, Chumbus. The, the, the salient point is the end of it. The game should not screw over a massive group of people for IRL mechanics. Exactly, exactly, exactly playing in groups and working with other people. Like the devs say, this is not a solo game. Right. The group focus, however, extends beyond the resource crafting, gathering, and farming and grinding. Combat as well, outside of those early tiers of wildlife, will require multiple players. This is especially true once you leave the starting areas. You pretty much need to be in a group if you're going to do any combat. Enemies right. in these zones will be way stronger than the gear you can craft at that time makes you. So until you actually go in and deal with those enemies and then craft the resources around them that they're basically protecting, you're not going to be able to do this in a, a small group or definitely not as a solo. In fact, in these areas, you will regularly see groups of like 10 people wailing away at a single boar. That's not an example. 10 people wailing away at a high level boar. <clears throat> That's a normal high level boar. That's not a raid boss, guys. They've made the normal higher level boars for like the better materials into raid bosses. That's crazy. Exaggeration. That's just what it's like. And I want to make clear too, I think it's perfectly fine to have a grind focused game. I think it's perfectly fine to have a game that requires grouping. Prehistorical and mammoth players. hunting. If yeah. anything, that's welcome. Most MMOs nowadays, they cater to solo play. It's a nice, oh my God. fresh breath yeah, of air to get, get accurate a different. Yeah. I also think it's perfectly fine to make a slower paced game as well with more time investment required for right. progression. But both of certain parts of this, he, he's completely right. Like, like these things individually are not an issue. Higher level grinding, not an issue. Specializations, not an issue. Um, and, and so on and so forth. But the thing is, these are combined with the grind. These are combined with needing 100 people. These are combined with a sub cost, as well as the ability to buy materials, as well as a $40 price tag. Th these, these are all combined into a just a mess when it's all together. Exactly. Yeah, who would win? 10 people or end game passive animal? Yeah, exactly. So those things will the likely will limit the game's you. potential audience, but that's okay. These aren't bad <clears throat> ideas. It's really just the implementation and more so the, uh, it's just not finished. It's not polished enough. And the motivation there to actually go through that right. grind this and is to not there go yet. through the effort of, of working with people and joining those large groups. Besides building, there's there's really not much else to this game. Right. And really that's what I think the bigger issue is. That's about all PAX Day is at the moment. A big grind for resources and a requirement to play with huge this groups to brutal. meaningfully progress. Combat is extremely rough. This is a massive negative for me. Even the right. gathering doesn't feel good, which certainly doesn't help. So yes, outside- I think when they fix the uh the if they fix the crafting make the boxes linked and if they do um a, an overhaul on the the combat and they add actual quests to the game and reasons to go into like the wilds to kill those inquisitors or whatever um th those three things will be a massive improvement to the game Side of building things, I guess PvP combat with bad combat, there's not much else for you to do in this game. Right. Not even to mention the game's monetization. For what I would consider right now a... Here we go. Here we go. Dude, the master tier of the game, $90. $90 for this. 
pretty rough product. They are charging $39 for basic access with there also being $60 and $100 tiers that grant additional character slots, cosmetics, and plots of land, which some people are. By the way, plots of land is absolutely a pay to win mechanic. Because if you put your plot of land, if you have like two, say you have the access to four plots of land, you have your one home plot of land, and then you have several other plots of land where you can lock others out of getting resources straight up. That's what you can do in this game. That is a recipe for disaster. She's beautiful. She's rich. She's got huge tracks of land. Yep. Lots of tracks of land. Exactly. Exactly. Considering and calling pay to win, these yeah. land plots provide a pretty big advantage over control of Huge. rare resources because they will spawn at set locations. So with extra plots, you can basically <laughs> spread your ability to get these resources, exactly. your, your access to it and to storing it and to access to things like dungeons. Plus, once the game is finished, they have also confirmed that it will require a monthly subscription to play. I think there in theory, having a monthly sub for an MMO is fine, but I will again say as a I will say that when now we've regressed to the point as gamers that a lot of people don't have the the time money or patience to do a subscription service for an mmo most people i would say that a game has to be ultra giga polished in order to require a sub i think world of warcraft might be the only mmo that really gets away with having a required sub now there's optional subs a lot of games do that uh you know uh, uh i would i would consider f14 as a, an optional sub, I would consider ESO as an optional sub. These are these are games with optional subs with major benefits. And a lot of times those can be egregious as well, and that kind of pisses me off. But but if a game requires an, uh, an a sub, I don't mind that. But it has to be a really, really good game. It has to be super worth it. Because if it's not, requiring a sub will only turn people off completely to the game. 100% right now it's not quite there it needs to improve quite a lot before i would even consider paying a subscription yeah, and i exactly. want to reiterate as well i think the premise of this game is good i think right now visually it is gorgeous love the way it looks just like getting screenshots and yeah. walking around the <clears throat> force of this game that's pretty cool and i also think this it's such a good building and walking simulator <laughs> structures that players can build are rather impressive frankly like this is a really well done build yourself a medieval town yeah. uh, game but that's all it is right now if you just want to make cool medieval castles with a bunch of your friends uh, in a pretty looking world a pax day does give it. you that but outside of that it's just pretty bare bones and frankly right. underbaked like i said it feels like an extremely early access game but i hope they make it better the pitch for the final version i hope they make it better as well day to be it sounds great There's certain parts of the bones are really good and so, I mean, yeah, but Harakanya, if that's what they're going for, it's totally fair. But the problem is Harakanya, they're trying to make this a very, you know, broad, accessible MMO on par with games like World of Warcraft. And at that point, like, this game is not even close. There's quite a ways uh, to go from what That's we've the seen thus far. I would be surprised, honestly, if the game actually launches into its 1.0 version 12 months from now. It yeah. appears like they're going to need a little more time. Or if it does, I would be surprised if it gets to a point where without. And I hope that if they do get to the point where they're going to have to either release the game in a broken state, uh, in like an unfinished state, or, you know, make a delay, they make the delay. Because when this game launches, it has to be really good. Because when a game launches and it sucks, we're gamers. We don't forget. When a game sucks, it is really hard to come back from a level of suckage and become a viable game again. It happened a few times, but it is very rare. It is very, very rare, especially for MMOs would consider satisfying for a 1.0 release for paying a subscription fee. There's a lot of promise here with PAX Day. I just, I, I wanted to make people aware that the current exactly. iteration, I just don't think is quite it. Doesn't mean that people won't enjoy it. I have enjoyed games that I've just done building in. I think a lot of people would right. consider EverQuest Next Landmark probably a bad game. It shut down after all, but I remember having fun with it. Although that was a little different because, uh, coincidentally enough, EverQuest Next Landmark was a building game where you could build massive structures as a single person, whereas again, this does. Yeah, I, I, I played that EverQuest game. I actually know what he's talking about.
have that group focus and, and we'll just see how that pans out in terms of audience size, in terms of success. <clears throat> uh, as of right now, the early access launch has not been very successful, but right. I wish the developers well and I hope they can turn PAX Day yeah. around. And the then... game the game is not launched yet. It's an early access. It is not actually launched yet uh, as like a full release. So the real marker is how does the game improve over the next few months? If the game shows like, for example, a combat overhaul or overhaul on any one of these problems over the next three months, I'll be very happy. I'll be very, very happy. But, uh, you know, if the game is like three months down the road and things are still the exact same for PAX Day, that's when you really start worrying about the future of the game, guys. That's when you really start worrying. But the reason that we're making this content is because we want this game to succeed. All right, let's see. Let's see. So these are the reviews. These are the reviews on Steam. Mobile game style chance to fail crafting for basic materials is an instant hard no. Especially when you combine it with the full price of the game plus subscription. You don't get to both charge me for my time and waste it. Edit kept playing the game over the weekend to give it more chances. Have it changed my mind. Jesus. 58, tower, uh, 58 hours at the time of writing. And the massive amount was spent gathering resources and grinding levels for skills. <clears throat> Building is fun, but even restrictive in third person mode. Graphics are bare bones, graphic options. 3090 was struggling. Combat mechanics are one of the worst I've ever seen. Jesus. 12 hours into the game, I think that's enough for now. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> they had three pros. Lots of potential. Crafting was good. They, they actually liked the amount of crafting. The graphics are gorgeous. Sure. The world is enormous, and you can spend a considerable amount of time just running around. <laughs> so that basically, like, you know, adds to the grind. The building, albeit good graphically, can be seriously pain in the ass. Sheer amount of resources needed to craft is humongous time sink. 13 hours simply making a small starter home and basic equipment. 13 hours for just a basic level. There's no way. Lack of creatures and NPCs. <clears throat> Some character animations look absurd. No way to specialize or differentiate character aside from your crafting i.e. no skills, no stats, no specs. And there will be occasional wipes. So all of that grind can be wiped away. Jesus Christ, man. Holy smokes, bro. Holy smokes. This is absolutely insane. Yeah. So we'll see. This is this is definitely, guys, a wait and see game. I sincerely hope the best for these devs. I will absolutely cover this game going forward because I want this game to succeed and I will cover any news with any major updates and stuff like that. So if you want to keep an eye on this game, do not worry, guys. I will give you the no BS response um, with all of the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, any any kind of updates or anything like that. If they do good stuff, I'll cover it. If they do bad stuff, I'll cover it. And uh, we'll see how it goes. We love MMOs in here. So if you like that kind of content, you want to see more of it, give it a like, give it a sub, share it with your friends, and uh, tell me your favorite part of this video or least favorite part in the comments below. Absolutely, guys. Can't wait to cover this more.